Hello everyone. The purpose of this lesson is to review the key concepts of sinusoidal functions. So I'm going to talk about period, maximum, minimum, the axis, the amplitude, domain, and range, and how to come up with an equation when you're given the graph of a sinusoidal function. Remember, a sinusoidal function is a special type of periodic function. Periodic functions are functions in which you have a repeating pattern that recurs over and over and over again. And it's sinusoidal if it has this wave pattern with a constant amplitude. Now the period is the length of one cycle. An easy way to find the length of one cycle is to look at uh, from one maximum to the next. How long does that take? Use the scale on your x-axis to figure it out. Well, this maximum happens at 30 degrees. This maximum happens at 150. So to go from one maximum to the next, it takes 120 degrees, and that is the period. Now, you can start from anywhere on the function. I could start here on the y-axis. When do I get back to that same spot? Here, 120 later. So from 0 to 120, the period is 120. Or I could even start here till here. Well, that's from 60 to 180. That's a span of 120. So that you know, regardless of where you start, the period is always 120 for one complete cycle. Your maximum and your minimum values, you read that just off the y-axis. Your highest and your lowest values. The axis or the central axis, well, that's right through the middle. You can think of it as halfway between your maximum and your minimum. So halfway between 5 and negative 1 is 2. So when I write the axis, remember, it's an equation. So it's y equals 2. That's what y equals on that central line. Now the amplitude, remember, that's the distance from the center, the central axis, to the maximum or to the minimum. On this graph, the central axis is at 2. The maximum is at 5. That means the amplitude is 3. Domain and range, we figure that out the same way we normally do. There are no restrictions on x because this is a periodic function. It keeps going all the way to the right, all the way to the left, everything in between. x can be any value, no restrictions. However, there are restrictions on y. The minimum value is minus 1, the maximum is 5. I already figured that out up here. So using that, I can write the restrictions on y. y is in between negative 1 and 5. Remember the less than or equals to symbol has that line underneath to indicate that y can also equal negative 1 and it can equal 5. Now to figure out our equation, a possible equation, we need to figure out our a, k, c, and d values. Remember the period is not your k value. But if you divide 360 by your period, then you will get your k value. So in this case, k is 3. The central axis, C for central axis, is 2, so I know my C value. And A for amplitude, amplitude is 3, that means A is 3. Now a D value, that's basically where you start your cycle. I can say, well, if I'm using a sine function as my parent function, it looks like I'm not moving the sine function at all. It's starting on the central axis at 0. That's where the parent function starts. So there hasn't been a phase shift at all, so d is 0. But if I wanted to do a cosine function, I could start here. It's been shifted to the right 30. So here are two possible equations that I could have to model this function. If I'm basing it off of a sine function, there has been no phase shift, so I don't have a d value in here. But I've got my a value, my k value, and my c value. If I use a cosine function as my parent function, well, I'll start at the maximum, shifted it to the right 30. So same amplitude, same k value, same central axis, but I've shifted to the right 30 units. So you can have different equations to model the same function, whether you're starting with a sine function or a cosine function. And there are actually more possible equations you could have written for this. So if you think you've come up with one that uh, fits and you're not sure, uh, 
just pause the video and uh, reach out, let me know, and I can point you in the right direction before you move on. But the main idea on this slide is that you can pick out this information and make an equation when you're given a graph. That's the important skill here. The next important skill is being able to start with an equation and turn it into a fairly accurate graph. Now the way I showed you in the lessons was to start by making a box like this. Find your central axis. I got that from here. Next, use the amplitude to figure out your maximum and your minimum values on the y-axis. The amplitude is 3, so go up 3 and down 3 from your central axis. Next, figure out your phase shift, or how, where your starting point is. In this case, we've shifted our graph left 30 degrees, so we're starting at minus 30. Now I use my k-value to figure out the period. So if k is 2, the period is 360 divided by 2, which is 180. So if the period is 180, that means from my starting point to the finish of one cycle, it's going to be increasing by 180. So if I'm starting at minus 30, I go up 180, I'll end at 150. And I can further figure out what values go on these key points. Halfway between minus 30 and 150 is 60. Halfway between minus 30 and 60 is 15. Halfway between 60 and 150 is 105. So now I've got all my values figured out for my x and my y axis. Now, the shape of the graph. This is a sine function, so I know I'm going to start on the central axis. But a is negative, which means I have a vertical reflection. So instead of going up, First, like a regular sine curve, I'm going to go down first, and then back up, and then back to where I started. So this is what one complete cycle will look like. Now if I'm going to take this box drawing of my function and apply it to the graph, I need to first make an accurate scale on my x and y axes. So here I'm just going up by 30s on the x-axis and I'm going up by 1's on the y-axis. Now remember, the goal is to make an accurate graph of this function here. I went through all the trouble of making this box drawing, and the whole purpose of that was to make it easier for myself to figure out where to put these major points. Now if it helps, you can actually just draw this outline of this box on your grid just lightly, just to help you figure out where to plot your points, but just follow the same pattern. Start on the central axis, end on the central axis, go halfway between. First you're going down, so halfway between the first two dots, you're down at the bottom. Halfway between the last two dots, you're up at your maximum. So you don't really have to think about what numbers you're lining up with on the grid. It's just you're cutting the box in half every time, and then you're either going to the middle of the box, the minimum or the maximum of the box. Then you can draw a smooth curve through your points and fill the grid as much as you can. Just keep drawing more and more cycles, as many as will fit. And once you do that, you have a fairly accurate graph of this function. So just remember how to pick out the important pieces of information. C for central axis. A for amplitude to figure out your maximum and your minimum. The D value is your phase shift. It tells you which way you're shifting the start of your graph, left or right, and how, by how much. So this one was left 30, so I went uh, to minus 30, left from 0. And the K value, you use that to figure out the period. So from your starting point to your ending point, how much do you have to increase? And the direction that your curve goes, well, depends on what the parent function is, in this case it was the sine value, so you know you're going to start on your central axis. And this was negative, which means you have a vertical reflection. So instead of going up like the parent function, it's going to go down first. Use that, draw the box on your actual graph, and then you can duplicate the box as many times as necessary to continue the function in either direction. So we've looked at making 
a graph into an equation and now making an equation into a graph. These are two fundamental skills in this unit. Next, making an equation of a function based on a description. So here's an example. A cosine function has an amplitude of 5, a period of 720 degrees, and a range of y is an element of the real numbers, but y must be between 2 and 12. Write an equation for the function. You have enough information here to figure out what the equation is, so why don't you pause the video and see if you can come up with this on your own. The amplitude is 5, which means our a value is 5. It's a cosine function. The period is 720, so 360 divided by 720 is a half. You could have put 0 0.5 there, that's fine as well. The range, well I see the minimum is 2, the maximum is 12. Halfway between that would be 7, that would be the central axis. So if the central axis is 7, then c equals 7. It doesn't say anything about a phase shift, so I, ha I haven't changed my starting point, so I don't have to worry about a d value in here. But now I have an equation for this function. Now in the previous lesson, we went through a lot of different applications of sinusoidal functions. I'm not going to go through a bunch of them right now. I am just going to highlight some uh, key strategies to help with these types of questions. Read the question to determine the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and your vertical displacement. That will help you figure out your values of A, K, D, and C. Once you know those values, make an equation. And then, depending on what the question's asking, you have to substitute the known value into the equation and solve for the unknown value. So if you're solving for your y variable, you need to know the x variable. If you're solving for your x variable, you need to know the y variable. And if you want to review some of the examples that I went through in that last lesson, you can rewatch that lesson video. But there are also plenty of examples in the review questions. So this was just meant to be a quick reminder of the key skills of the unit. I've gone through them. If you have any questions while you're practicing, please reach out and I'll do my best to help.